Bob Iger is pushing back on the idea that there's superhero fatigue. I'm wildly disappointed because I love the idea of four women leading a superhero film. Say MCU all you want, I don't give a shit. I hate the MCU slogan. I hate it. Now, I'm sure you've heard the term MCU. It's being used by some fan communities. And yes, the term is extremely offensive, but it's also becoming undeniably true. Everything they're working on is terrible. The executive noted that they're doing a lot and even quietly canceled certain projects. Added, not only do you look at the films you're making, you look at every part of that process. Who the directors are, who's being cast, reading scripts. I personally watch films three to five times with the team and just create a culture of excellence and respect, which is really important with the creative community. It's too late. Look at me. I'm such a dick. It's never too late to stop being a dick. Release of the year, Deadpool and Wolverine, which Iger predicted will be one of the more successful Marvel movies we've had in a long time. More successful Marvel movies we've had in a long time. Successful Marvel movies we've had in a long time. What does Disney think they're cooking? So over the past couple weeks, it's fair to say that Marvel, or I should say specifically Disney CEO Bob Iger, has slowly but surely been releasing quote unquote good interviews and going on a publicity tour in order to gain some much needed traction, attention, and salvation when it comes to the current state of the MCU. And while I'm not going to dive into the full lore and history of the downfall of the MCU, we're not childish at this point, we all understand how to read, and we all know that we have been receiving subpar products in regard to the studio's original formula. And well, a congratulations is in order, because it has been working with multiple videos on this platform from all sides of YouTube, spawning videos with titles such as Disney finally gets it, or Disney is about to change, or vice versa, just substitute the word Disney for Marvel and you pretty much get the gist. And with the release of the X-Men 97 trailer, the surprise casting drop on Twitter of all places of one of the most highly anticipated movies Marvel has baited us with with the Fantastic Four, and the main driving force of this confusing resurgence Marvel think they find themselves in, the teaser trailer release of Deadpool 3, now titled Deadpool and the Wolverine. But my question to all of you, the audience, the paying customers, and my fellow patrons in digesting superhero fecal matter over the past half decade, what exactly has Marvel or Disney learned? Have they learned what the audience needs? I wouldn't bet on it, seeing how Echo and the Marvels were the MCU's most recent releases. Have they learned what the audience wants? Again, I wouldn't bet on it, seeing how money is still being poured into shows like Agatha Fourth Name Change, The Young Avengers, and coming from a studio that was basically strong-manned on social media into not killing off main characters such as Foggy and Karen from the Daredevil series off-screen. In reality, the only talk, logic, and or reasonings that I have seen to support this fallacy is the release of Deadpool and Wolverine later on this year. But what exactly does that prove? Let's not kid ourselves here. Marvel and Disney specifically in their current state are full beneficiaries of the excellent craft, hard work, and time Ryan Reynolds has put into the character and brand name that is Deadpool. Raking in and earning that one and a half billion dollars over two movies without the extensive resources and characters in the MCU catalog at the time. Charm, charisma, jokes, well choreographed action sequences, and good character writing can go a long way when you actually tackle a project with a higher IQ than a grilled cheese. So let's actually take a step back and look at the facts. Marvel did not have the common knowledge to not make the third Deadpool film R-rated, except for being manhandled on social media. Marvel did not have the writers that could hold a pen to the comedic chops of Ryan Reynolds, and Marvel did not have the interpersonal relationship with Hugh Jackman that was tight enough to have him on board for an MCU-related project. Shit, I don't even know if they could have used the old reliable tactic of throwing enough money at somebody at this point because their pockets are looking so broke. We're to a point where the official trailer hasn't even dropped yet, and yet the MCU fanboys of YouTube and Twitter 
are talking about Deadpool being the new face of the MCU, a standing and leading man. Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool. We need to get a grip here. Because honestly, if that doesn't tell you the state of the MCU and its character writing over the past five years since Endgame, we're in a deeper hole than I thought. But in order to not just ramble on like I am just some confused and her MCU Teletubby, I do recognize that there are some positives that can, maybe, come from the predictable box office success that will be Deadpool and the Wolverine. And it's not any of the solutions or lessons to the quote-unquote problems that I have seen so far when it comes to the access media in the MCU shills. The MCU doesn't have a quantity over quality problem. That is probably the worst argument that I have heard for the MCU over the past half decade. When you really think about it, the majority of the people in this video more than likely eat at Chick-fil-A, Chipotle, Popeyes, or whatever your choice is about once a week. You want to know why? Newsflash. Because they sell good products. There is literally no such thing as an oversaturation of good products. You will never find an example of what I just described. And even when you look at the provided examples of what I just gave, they will never change their formula. Chick-fil-A or Popeyes will never change how they cook their chicken. In-N-Out will never change their burger recipe. British beans will always be British beans. You want to know why? Simply because you don't change what's not broken. Which leads to the real lesson at hand. The real lesson that Marvel, Disney, and honestly any studios that are going through this similar problem, with the exception of animated movies, is that formulas are good. I'll repeat it again. Formulas are a good thing. And the release and future success of Deadpool and Wolverine is a main testament and backing force to my own argument. The fan uproar or fan appreciation, depending on the side of the table you're on about the management of Deadpool 3 after purchase and your current opinion about the state of the MCU, but the fact that the R rating was demanded by fans and the team itself, the fact that Ryan Reynolds was allowed to continue to reign as the head of the snake in his own project was noticeable and necessary, because fans of Deadpool know exactly what to expect from a Deadpool movie, certain ingredients that are expected to hit their taste buds. A formula, so to say. What I'm trying to get at here is just because there might be a diamond in the rough coming from a studio that has already been shamelessly taking a victory lap and claiming it as their own material, that doesn't mean that Captain America fourth name change is going to miraculously get better. It doesn't mean that the Thunderbolts doesn't have the potential to flop. It doesn't mean that the Toontown character writing is going to exceed a second grade writing level. It doesn't entail that the MCU timeline is going to unfuck itself. It doesn't mean that their Blade movie is going to eventually become reality. The success of Deadpool and Wolverine honestly doesn't guarantee anything for Marvel when it comes to its future projects or future relationship and partnership with the audience. I don't really understand how anybody is falling for this sham that the MCU is selling. I'll leave you with this. In my humble and extremely small opinion, I truly believe that if Marvel doesn't hop back in the kitchen to relearn the lesson of their original formula, that core ingredient that made their previous formula in the MCU's Infinity Saga so successful, not only financially, but commercially, then it's wraps. And the MCU will become a franchise and brand known for its diamonds in the rough compared to the absolute juggernaut they once were. Again, I have to reiterate, less than a half decade ago. Kind of like Game of Thrones. And the worst part is, is that people used to complain about the formula in the Infinity Saga. Imagine being angry at something that tastes fantastic 90% of the time. It's shameful and criminal from both parties, but hope is the fool's ally. And if I can save even one person from the MCU's false hopes, promises, and statements, well, that's a victory in my book. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.